International Airport in New York. There were a lot of storms on the eastern coast that day, and so the plane had to uh, take several detours and go into several holding patterns uh, to avoid the storms on its way to uh, land at JFK Airport. Uh, because of this, by the time the plane got to uh, New York, they were already out of fuel, uh, literally running out. And of course, other planes were waiting to land as well. So Avianca Flight 52 told the control towers, we're running low on fuel. They were trying to get the message across that this is an emergency. We need to land right now. But they never actually said that. They just hinted towards that when they said, we're low on fuel. The control towers failed to pick up on the gravity of the situation and, and what an emergency it was. And so they thought, well, you came from uh, South America, of course you're beginning to run low on fuel by the time you get to New York. And so they put uh, Flight 52 in another holding pattern in the queue to land. While that happened, the plane literally ran out of fuel. When they did an investigation of the crash and listened to the black box and the conversation that was going on between the pilots and the control tower, they realized that the pilots never used the word emergency, never really said what the situation actually was. The, they were trying to be way too polite instead of being more assertive and telling them this is an emergency we need to land right now. Because of that, the control tower uh, operators didn't pick up that, that there was an emergency. They thought running low on fuel instead of we're out of fuel. And because of the communication lapse or miscommunication, 73 people perished. I want to share this story because right now we're living in different times. Uh, we're not able to meet at church every week. Some of us are meeting online. Some of us are finding small groups to meet together with on Zoom. And when all this happens, some people may feel left out. That it's possible for people to fall through the cracks. Even though churches are trying to include everybody and invite everybody, chances are you might be going uh, through a time of loneliness right now and, and depression that other people may not be picking up on right now. I want to plead with you, if, if that is you, be assertive. Say, call somebody, call me. My number's in, uh, on my profile, Facebook profile. Call and tell me this is an emergency. I need someone to talk to. I need a friend. Because right now, during this time of isolation, we, we don't know how to keep in touch with everybody. We're trying, but it doesn't always work out the way we want it to. So don't be afraid to be assertive. I want to share another story. When I was in my early 20s living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on uh, Sunday nights, I always liked to go out to eat with a couple of friends, kind of the last celebration before the weekend was over or whatever. And uh, I remember one Sunday night in particular, husband answered the phone. I asked him, do you guys want to go meet at a restaurant? And he says, well, actually, we're really tired and we just want to stay home. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, I'll call somebody else. But as I got ready to hang up the phone, he said, wait a minute, William, do you need somebody to talk to? And I'm like, no, I don't really need anybody to talk to. I just wanted to go eat. And, and that's the truth. And he goes, well, okay, if, if you don't need anybody to talk to, then we'll just meet another time. And I said, that's fine. I hung up, called another set of friends, and we went out to eat. But I've never forgotten that phone call because while it really wasn't on the control tower's radar that Flight 52 was getting ready to crash because they weren't picking up on the signals from the uh, cockpit, my friend that night on the phone that I was on his radar if I needed somebody. And that is just 
always stayed with me. I've never forgotten that. That even though everything was okay, he wanted to make sure before he hung up the phone. And so I want to plead with you too. Look out for other people. They may not be sending out the signals. They might be miscommunicating that they are actually in an emergency situation. If so, take the time like my friend did and reach out. Take the time to reach out and make sure other people are okay. Let's not let somebody fall through the cracks, so to say, during this time of isolation because it can happen anytime. And it can definitely happen during this time because these are, are, are unchartered times we're in. And we haven't really been trained how to look out for one another during these times. But you know what? If we'll be like my friend, go the extra mile. Look out for people. Make sure they're cared for. Make sure they know. Go ahead and so there's no miscommunication. Like my friend, when, it, when I called that night, you know, he thought, well, I'm not picking up on any signals and William really needs to talk right now. But let me just make it clear. Okay? Make it clear with your friends that you're there for them. Because you don't know what emergency they might be in and yet they're not sending out the right signals. They might be miscommunicating that they're in an emergency situation. If you're in an emergency situation, you're depressed, you're lonely, let everybody know. Make it clear. And if somebody, if you're looking out for somebody, make sure they understand. Make sure that you communicate clearly that you care for them and you are uh, there if they need somebody. Thank you so much for listening.